Hello, I'm Tony Vlahos, the creator and host of Execunet Masterclass, as well as the Chief Marketing Officer of Execunet. And I have the pleasure today of speaking with Jim Doyle. Jim is a human resources consultant. He's a talent management professional. And he's the author of a new book titled Hope for Life, Being Your Best Self When You Need It Most. And you know, of course, that my promise to you as Executive member is to connect you with trusted advice that can transform your career, how you work, as well as the way you live. So when I was introduced to this book that Jim wrote, I just had to share it with you because I really believe it has the power to transform how you lead and how you work and how you live. So with that, Jim, hello. It's good to be talking to you. Good to be here with you today, Tony. So let's dive right in. I read your book and I thought to myself, it really isn't a business book. It isn't exactly a self-help book, but rather than my defining it, tell me a little bit about why you wrote the book and how you look at the book as, as a tool. You know, that's a great question to start, uh, Tony. I think all of us have moments in life when we have an opportunity to be great. I think the question for all of us is when those moments present themselves, are we ready? Are we uh, enabled to step into the moment and be our best self? And I think these moments happen in two particular cases. One, the expected uh, case. And for executive members, that's when all of your planning and, and uh, uh, positioning and research and thinking about what am I going to say when I'm in front of a hiring manager come to mind. And in those moments, yes, we're prepared to step in, hopefully to be our best. And then there are other moments, Tony, when I'll call those unexpected. Life serves up uh, moments where we suddenly are asked to step in and be our best self. And the question is, are we ready to do that? And I think the foundation for those moments is less about knowledge and skills and more about character and who you are uh, and the internal foundation, hope, uh, gratitude, really enable one to step into those moments and be their best self. That's lovely. You write about a lot of aspects of executive life, Jim, and I want to start with this, of course, very profound moment of losing a job and as you write in your book, losing an identity. Elaborate for me, please what you'd like readers to take away from this aspect of your book. I think there are parallels in life, Tony, um, to both losing a job and losing, losing a, a, a loved one. Um, a year ago, I lost one of my sons um, to uh, suicide. And, you know, losing that son um, it is not exactly like losing a job, but it, I was confronted with having to not just recover, Tony, but heal. And I think for people who are in job transition, when suddenly the day comes that their position is eliminated or the company is going in a different direction or they no longer have what's required to perform in their role, they've got to come to grips with it's less about me and it's more about how do I heal and move on to the next opportunity in life? What is the next season of my life going to be like. And that is a huge uh, undertaking for any of us to have to go through. And I tried to capture some of that in the book in terms of finding those moments, those reasons why we can be hopeful, why we can carry on and aspire to the next opportunity. Mm. You write, Jim, about surviving uncertain times. I um, know for sure that what you went through is one of those times. How did you get through that, Jim? And what wisdom did you gain and are gaining throughout that process that you'd like our Execunet members to know about? You know, Tony, that's a very heartfelt question. And I think all of us at times have to look ourselves in the mirror and say, there are things that I am no longer in control of. In fact, there's very few things in life, if we're honest with ourselves, that we do control. So learning to live with uncertainty, learning to let go, learning to uh, be 
uh, committed to uh, an outcome without knowing exactly how you're going to get there is really critical. I, I call that living with the unknown. Some people might call it detachment. One developing the skills and the heartfelt uh, awareness to say, I'm going to be open to what comes at me, knowing that there may be multiple ways to get to the final end, and I can't possibly know them all. So rather than waste energy trying to come up with answers to uh, questions you may not know or solutions for things that you don't know, holding yourself as willing and able to work through uncertainty and go with the flow versus either run away uh, or try to over control things. And so it's very much being uh, fluid in the moment and paying attention to all of the things that are going on around me and then tapping into opportunity as they present themselves. Hmm. And just listening to you describe that, Jim, reminds me what it was about your book that really touched me the most. I knew that the book came from or out of a moment of profound sadness and grief and for many would lead to instant despair. And yet the words you use in your book are words like your next life adventure and hopeful secrets and finding the treasure in your life. That to me is something that many of us would not think is the book that you would write coming out of that experience. And yet that's what you chose to offer us. Tell me about how you were able to do that. You know, let's say that uh, an individual learns that their position has been eliminated. The immediate response is to say, why me? How did this happen? Yes. Uh, the company is wrong. Uh, who made this decision? And, and all of those questions and the energy that follows one putting their attention on that gets in the way of possibility. Uh, the late Robert Schuller used to talk about possibility thinkers. Uh, uh, and Stephen Covey talked about the difference between a scarcity mentality and abundance mentality. The thing that I learned and what served me well, and I really learned it from other people whose stories I wrote about, was that people that survived and thrived through transition, whether it be job loss, their home loss, uh, something in the economy, uh, losing a loved one, they were able to embrace this sense of abundance, of prosperity, of possibility, uh, versus living in a world of scarcity and again trying to pursue questions that they probably aren't going to have answers to. And instead shifting in their mind, which also then allowed them to shift in their body, to think about what is the treasure I'm really seeking? Uh, I recently had a CFO come to me and say, you know, my position was eliminated, but after 20 years of being CFO, I don't know if I really want to pursue CFO work for the next career. That, Tony, is an example of shifting away from old thinking uh, in the paradigm of I've got to get to the exact root cause and the answer to possibility of what else is out there for me. That's terrific, terrific advice. And again, as I as I recall, so many great chapters in this in this action packed and advice filled book. It it strikes me that it's really as one of your uh, one of the people who've commented on the book has, has said it's for leaders of life. It's for business leaders certainly, but we of course are much more than our jobs and our careers and the work we do. We have lives, and I think. Your book is one of these signposts and, and guides that will help us through. Jim, I, I want to end by asking you to tell me why every leader should have a copy of this book on their desk. Tony, thanks for asking me that because I think that is a wonderful way to, to, to end our chat today. I think as leaders in life, we are all faced with dark moments when things look their worst when things are really bleak, when it feels like the world is closing in on us. And it's in those moments that we need to find and touch the uniqueness, the hope that we all can have in life to really embrace gratitude and embrace the fact that we have gifts and unique abilities that can help sustain us uh, both today and tomorrow and, and to be 
in a, a place of possibility versus scarcity and to really visualize the moment of working through challenge and not be overwhelmed by challenge. It's, it's a little bit like the surfer who has to paddle out to catch the next wave. And if they're not willing to do that, then they will not catch the wave of a lifetime, if you would. And so it's in those moments of not knowing that we are most challenged, but if we can work our way through that, then coming out of the other side can, in fact, be a much better place for us. Beautifully said. The book is called Hope for Life. Being Your Best Self When You Need It Most. It's written by Jim Doyle, who is a member of the executive community. And Jim, I want to thank you for taking time today to talk to me about it and share your story with all the members that are watching or rather listening to our, our conversation today. And I hope they'll pick it up. Thank you so much. And I know we'll be talking again real soon. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Tony, for having me on. You bet.